welcome to Issaquah Buzz, where we talk about all things business in Issaquah, from retail gossip to new restaurants. My name is Autumn Monahan, and I work with the city's communications team. I'm here with Jen Davis Hayes, my favorite coworker to gossip with about all things business. Yes, um, hi. hi, Jen. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing really good. Um, so we have we have some good business gossip to talk about, and then mm-hmm. um, just previewing that we also I got the chance to uh, meet with the owner of Burgermaster and hear more about their plans for uh, the property they just purchased, the old Triple X. So stay tuned for more details about that. But let's yes. get to some other um, business gossip first, and then we'll get to Burgermaster. Um, so what are you what are you hearing around town as far as anything that might be opening or or any yeah. expansions? Yeah, too too exciting. There are a couple of exciting things. So Forest Ferry Bakery on Front Street in downtown, they're going to be expanding into the space next door. So um, if you remember, the Revolve Consignment used to be in that location. So they're going to have seating, they're going to be open later, and they're going to be able to host events. So they hope to do that um, this summer sometime. So check that out. Um, I know that our residents have always talked about wanting more bakery options. So this will give them another opportunity to enjoy that. Um, and then on the other side of town, um, you remember where the Pier 1 Imports used to be back by the Cinnabar and other, and Girk's, um Ski is currently? Yes. Yep. So uh, Mayuri uh, Indian Grocery Store uh, signed a lease and they're going to be opening uh, in that spot. They're, they're go- they just started the permit process, um, but they're very excited to be coming back to the city. They used to be in Heritage Square where Tipsy Cow is on Gilman. Yeah. Um, and then that sold um, in 2013, so a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but they've been trying to get back to Issaquah. So we're very excited that they found a location that's going to work for them. So that's really going to be a nice hub back there because there's going to be them as well as H Mart um, right next to each other. So it'll start to bring some more light back to that area. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, that's actually a pretty large space, too, for them, for for uh, yeah. Mary. Yeah, so I'm excited to yeah. see what they would have. So I understand that at Red, at the Red, Redmond Town Center, they actually moved into a bed uh, to a former Pier 1 site as well. So oh. um, this is a little bigger, but uh, they're kind of familiar with the old layout. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, experts in that renovation. Oh, exactly. Very cool. Awesome. Um, okay, we keep teasing it. And I know we need to stop and just wait for like <laughs> people to actually be ready to announce stuff. But yes. I have seen some building materials nearby the Bed Bath and Beyond. Um, what's going on? Yeah, sorry, can't announce yet. But <laughs> it's not. It's not. Jen! I know. I feel so bad. This is the long. This is the 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 economic development is a marathon, not a sprint, right? But <laughs> so the ma- building materials are for. Uh, they're going to be installing Tesla superchargers there at the Commons. Oh. So they're just using that as a holding site for the materials. So, um, but we hope to hear. I know I've been saying this every time for yeah. the last six months, but we hope to hear an official announcement soon about the tenant. So once they they yeah. are willing to um, allow, you know, it out loud, we'll we'll yep. be excited and. And who knows, maybe another emergency podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I feel like anytime I've seen any of those Tesla um, charging station, they're always full. So that'll be yes. interesting to see kind of the usage here. There's yeah. also, I was just telling our sustainability team, some other chargers, um, not Tesla, but just general um, EV mm-hmm. chargers that they installed at the Meadows uh, shopping area near oh, Starbucks. Nice. Oh yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh they're charge point chargers. So anyway, those they're they're already in. It looks like they're just doing the finishing touches, but that is another option too for those that are uh, driving EVs. So yeah. that's exciting. There's a lot of I know a lot of shopping centers are being approached by the companies because they they understand too that people are gonna then, yeah. you know, park and then go shopping. So it's yeah. a win-win for everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so our social team was really excited to um, help spread some big news for Costco. Uh, do you want to share kind of what that's all about? Yeah. So some of you may know that uh, Costco leases space outside their headquarters. So when they built their headquarters building, we expected them to, you know, kind of pull pull out all those leases out and you know have a bunch of empty buildings. But they decided to actually stay in one of the large buildings back by Siemens and FedEx. Um, and they purchased it because they understand they understand that they are growing so quickly and it's it's um, easier and better for them right now to purchase a building and stay in it 
and uh, continue to you know move the other folks back to headquarters, which I think they're almost done with. Um, so again, just it just shows the growth that Costco continues to have in our community. Yeah. And um, and then how that spreads out to others, like to vendors and to other businesses that really connect in with the employees. So the more employees that are working there, the more employees that are going to our restaurants and doing errands on lunchtime and after work, going to the Village Theater, that type of thing. So yeah. I'm really excited that they decided to purchase one of those buildings and that I think will help others to kind of look at those two other buildings to say, hey, all right, there's already activity there. It's not this big, barren, um, uh, empty office building. So yeah, another investment in our community. We love it. Yeah, more jobs as well. And, yes. you know, one, one thing that I learned working for the city um, is just, and the relationship with Costco is just how many other employees travel to, you know, because this is the headquarters for Costco, yes. travel here, and yeah. then also stay at our hotels, also mm-hmm. support our local uh, businesses. Yep. So yeah. that's also a big uh, driver um, of tourism in a way, you know, the business side. Oh, it, that's why we have so many hotels is a lot of Costco and others um, use yeah. the hotels, but it's a lot of it driven um, by uh, not only Costco, but Siemens and Sanmar, you know, bringing people from across the country. And so it's really great that they have that uh the, the hotels have that uh, access. And then what we're hoping with uh, like a visit Issaquah, for instance, is to to have those people like, hey, maybe I'll stay an extra day and go do some touristy things in Issaquah yeah. and around the region. Or maybe I'll bring my wife and kids and they can go do stuff while I'm working. So, you know, we're building upon that. That's what, you know, economic development's really about is building upon what's already there and mm-hmm. yeah, build upon your assets as opposed to trying to be something you aren't. Yeah. So. Um, so I, I, I often wonder if you get sick of how many times I send you a message like later in the <laughs> evening on Chief's chats, or no. I'm like breaking Never. business news, Jen, but the one that I sent you recently, thank you for yeah. your patience that I'm always wanting to like chat about these things was I saw on social media that uh share tea is closing in Issaquah. So they already closed. Um, that happened yeah. end of March. I broke the news to my daughters. Uh, it was one of our family's favorite places to go for a treat, but but also reminded them that there's plenty of other awesome um, locations to get bubble tea throughout Issaquah. So we've been sampling others. Uh, we okay. just went to the one near um, uh, Dozone. I forget the name of it. Timeless um, Tea. Timeless Tea, yes. And there's so many others. So we've been kind of making it a just a, a fun challenge now to go try all the other options that are out there. Um, so... Um, yeah. Sad to see them go, but just know that there's other options if you need need yeah. a boba. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we all yeah, yeah. do that, need that sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get to Burger Masters. So, um, so they had a media event um, on Monday uh, where several different media came out. So King Five and uh, Four Two Five Business and several other reporters got um, just a snippet of time with Alex Jensen. He's the um, owner of Burger Master. He's mm-hmm. the third generation. Um, and so we booked a time slot and, you know, Ooh. we're becoming like legit media, Jen, where we, we like, are. <laughs> we are part of like a media event. <laughs> um, so anyway, I got to have um, a few minutes with Alex um, and he told us a lot about his plans for the site at Triple X uh, and then gave us a tour inside. Um, so uh, let's watch that and then we'll come back and, and chat a little bit. Bit. Right. Hi, I'm Autumn Monahan. I work with the city's communications team, and I'm thrilled to be here today with Alex Jensen. He is the owner of Burger Master. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you Autumn. I'm delighted to be here with you. Yeah. I So I'm quite a nerd uh, when it comes to anything communications. I love your guys' website. Thank you. And I was thrilled to see the little ribbon that says, Coming soon, Issaquah. Um, I hope that you've felt the love of our community after you announced that you are rehabbing the triple X and locating Burger Master here. Very much so. Uh, we've been delighted with the outpouring of support online. I know some people are very concerned. Uh, they want to maintain kind of the iconic nature of this location. Yeah. They want to maintain the, the car shows. They're concerned about what kind of root beer we're going to serve. Uh, <laughs> our goal is to try to keep everybody as happy as possible. Uh, I, I think we're just delighted to be able to continue on this tradition uh, prevent this from being condominiums. Yeah. Uh, we want to put in some some work. Uh, it's going to take a while, mm-hmm. but the goal is to be here for the next couple of decades to be able to serve the community well. Great. Well, everyone is thrilled, at least that we can tell on all of our platforms. So we're really excited to welcome you. Um, can we talk a little bit just about family history and kind of the origins of Burger Master for those that may not know kind of your company story? Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Burger Master was started in 1952. 
My grandfather had tried a couple of different restaurant concepts. Uh, he lost a lease uh, in downtown Seattle. And there is uh, the Mowat brothers were developing a property on 45th Street near the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. They were looking for someone to open up a restaurant. And the I don't remember the guy's name, but the first guy they thought of, he was out of town. He was on a two-week vacation to Hawaii. And the Moets didn't want to wait. This is uh, before email. Uh, you couldn't really even contact somebody in a different state that easily. And luckily, someone else mentioned, you know, uh, that Phil Jensen guy just lost his lease. And he's a pretty good restaurateur. You should go talk to him. And they called him up. He came and looked at the property and, and the, kind of the rest is history. Wow. So they gave him a, a good start. The original location was a drive-in down there uh, on 45th. Mm -hmm. It eventually became a sit-down restaurant, but most of our other locations are a drive-in now uh, in honor of that original location. Wow. So, and you're a third generation ownership? I am. Yeah, that's wow. correct. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I grew up uh, pouring Cokes about age nine, <laughs> uh, washing dishes quite a bit. I actually got like a real paycheck when I was about 14. Uh, it worked for a number of years uh, before going to law school. Told myself I would never touch this business again. Uh, and then, you know, here famous, you are. And here I am. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, famous last words, as my dad would say. <laughs> uh, so, so, what are your plans for this location? Will it also be a drive up? That is the goal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, this location uh, was constructed in 1968, and originally it was a drive in. So, oh, wow. Uh, much like the original university location uh, that was a gas station, had a drive in ramp in the back. This one was the same. Uh, so, it's offices now, but all those offices were uh, drive in stalls mm. up until I believe 1982 is the number that's getting thrown around. Okay. Uh, and all the infrastructure is still there. That's the thing that really kind of excites us. Oh, wow. I like to restore old things and make them new. Yeah. And so it's a great opportunity. We're going to pull off all the glass and the, and the drywall and the kind of the framing lumber that's there. And uh, most everything is, is still existing. The goal is to basically give it a coat of paint. And that should be the easy part. Yeah. Uh, it's all the work inside the restaurant that's going to be a lot more difficult. And we've got some plans for that. But we're waiting on permits. It's going to take some time. Great. So a lot of people have asked us, we, I haven't heard the answer quite yet. So we'd love to know, are there plans to keep this iconic sign? Definitely. Okay. I do not want to get rid of that at all. Okay. One, uh, I think it's just amazing. Uh, two, I know it's iconic for the community. And so uh, it would be disappointing for them if we were to do anything with that. We'll probably update some of the colors just to represent the Burgermaster brand. Yeah. We'd like to get our name on there somewhere so people understand it's a Burgermaster. But other than that, I'd like to leave the sign unchanged. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Also, you know, so I was on your website. I was doing just some research around Burgermaster. I have been a lifelong fan of Burgermaster, if you can't tell. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, but, and I, you know, I have always noticed the landscaping has been very nice, but did not realize the history around that, too. So yeah. are there also plans? Well, I'd love to hear just a bit more and to kind of share with our viewers how important landscaping is to each of your locations and maybe what plans may be here, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mentioned that original location uh, built in 1952 yeah. over kind of by the University of Washington. Uh, my grandfather was very excited. He had the business up and running. My grandmother came by and it's like, it's just, it's missing something. Uh, so she got some window boxes and put some flowers in there. And that was kind of the start. Mm -hmm. uh, we've really gone uh, pretty heavy with the landscaping from there. Yeah. Uh, we do it to whatever degree we can. Some of our stores are more limited in the amount of grounds available. There's a lot of concrete and asphalt here, yep. but we're going to do yep. what we can. We've got some planting beds here. We've got these trees. There's some space in the back. We'll probably have some pots to try to add uh, more foliage. Uh, yeah, but that's certainly a goal of ours. And my grandmother still uh, still around, 104 years old. Wow. And, uh, she stopped doing the planting about probably 10 or 15 years ago, uh, but she still has very strong opinions over like what plants we plant and and the specific varieties of tulips that are going to be going in the fall. So um, we will continue to take her consultation as long as she'll provide it. Oh, I love it. I, one of my favorite landscaping areas in Issaquah is actually right here at Front and Gilman um, that the city maintains. And so I just love the idea that that could, that could continue here with some really, yeah, really yeah. cool landscaping. Yeah. We look forward to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so what are, and of course you're in permitting and you've got plans, but what is your, what's your hope as far as when we'll be eating burgers at this location? That's a fantastic question. <laughs> uh, 
for the inside to be totally remodeled is going to take a while. And we know that people want to get the burgers as soon as possible, especially if they want to try to provide, you know, some food for the car shows. Yeah. So we're going to have a food trailer here. Uh, it's not quite a food truck. Okay. It's more like a mobile home than an RV, if that makes sense. Um, so that'll be here hopefully uh, end of June, July, uh, maybe August. I, I don't know exactly. Okay. Uh, but we're going to try to park that kind of right here. And then we're going to have a secondary trailer, um, refrigeration, you know, all of the extra meat, potatoes, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite literally. Uh, <laughs> and that's going to hopefully get us through until maybe January, February or March of next year when we anticipate having the rest of the restaurant open. Great. Yeah. Well, so would you be comfortable with us checking out what it looks like inside? We certainly can. It's okay. a little bit rough. Okay. Uh, all the memorabilia is gone. The kitchen equipment's gone. Okay. If you guys want to take a peek, yeah, come on in. All right, let's yeah. do it. This is very different than I remember it. It is quite a bit different, yes. All the memorabilia has been stripped off of the walls. Wow. The booths are gone. Uh, you can see kind of, yeah, what it's like when it's stripped down. Yeah. So uh, I, I think this gives you a better understanding of the amount of work that we have to do. Um, we have a little bit of popcorn ceiling here. We want to get rid of that. Um, I believe there's some asbestos in there. So we've got an abatement team coming in. Uh, after that, all of the walls will be going down to studs. Okay. Um, if we're doing that, we're probably replacing the windows and the exterior stuff. Um, we got to get new insulation in here. Uh, this building is ideally going to be here for the next 40 or 50 years. We want to make sure we bring all the energy up to compliance so that we're being efficient. Um, this is still the Northwest. Yeah. We want to be good stewards of the environment. Yeah. Uh, new flooring. Um, we'll be putting in uh, new seating. We'll probably have to move the wall a little bit because we'll plan to install a double kitchen. Oh, this location. what does that mean? Uh, we're basically going to have two separate kitchen lines, each capable of running independently. Okay. Uh, and then we get really, really busy. They can run together. And that way, um, right now at some of our locations, we have a little bit of a problem at night. Uh, we do okay with the driving business yeah. and the takeout business. But when you add the third party delivery, the DoorDash onto that, um, it just, it bogs the kitchen down and we want to be able to provide hot food and service in like five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so that's our goal. We're experimenting with this and hoping that we can kind of provide a new prototype for future location. Wow. So, so two kitchen areas here yeah. and so there will be some indoor seating so you can come and eat and not be in your car, right? We want that's, to preserve that. Okay. We'd like to keep a fireplace. Maybe it's inside, maybe it's outside. Oh, I'm not cool. quite sure, but uh, yeah. we figure It'd be nice to preserve that. Yeah. 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 And then coming in here. So this is the old kitchen. Wow. You're right. Seeing it here, I now realize why. You, yeah. You'll, you'll need some time. This all has to get completely demolished. So we will gut this as well. Um, these hoods are pretty old. We need a couple of brand new class one hoods. Uh, yeah. Uh, two new grills, about six new fryers, three or four milkshake machines. Um, and room for a whole lot of root beer. Yeah. So do you have plans for the menu yet or is that still gonna be in the works? Uh, the menu, once we're open inside, yeah. that will be pretty much exactly the same as other locations. Okay. We have our, our classic burgers, fries, you know, sodas, milkshakes. Um, people really like our fish and chips. We hand bread yes. that. Um, yeah, our Dungeness Crab and Swiss Sandwich has a very loyal following. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll all be there once the inside store is open. That food trailer I was talking about, Yeah. As pretty much going to be burgers, fries, and drinks okay. because it's just super limited on space and trying to keep that, the order moving quickly. Yeah. That'll be great though, that you can just even start some business on site as you're doing the work. So We're looking great. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. You're very welcome. Um, yeah. And I, I, I know we'll keep in touch. I'm really excited to hear more about the progress yeah. uh, and to celebrate first with, um, you know, on site with your food trailer and then to celebrate when you open too. So we're really excited. Make sure to have you back. And yeah, definitely. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Autumn. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. All right, welcome back. Uh, so first off, my biggest takeaway was, wow, there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, a very old building, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, I think with all the memorabilia on there, I you didn't realize how old the building was, but I think they were there since the 60s or something. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it, I think for me, it, that also reiterated that, you know, it's fun for us to gossip and talk about this is opening or that's opening when, when, when. Um, this takes time. And yeah. and I know that just in my other hats working for the city, but yeah. but seeing it, it was like, all right, I understand. Um, you know, timelines you, they can they can take a while and you can have delays and all sorts of things. And so that yeah. was just that was really good for me to see and really hit home of um just, you know, sometimes the these massive projects that businesses take on to really mm-hmm. reinvest in our community. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And um, I know I, I, I've been working in economic development for 24 years now and people are like, oh, I'm going to open it in two months. And I'm like, mm. and it's not because of city process taking long. It's just there's a lot when you actually go in there. And so, again, this yeah. building is a little bit more than <laughs> the normal place. But but, you know, really, that's where our role is, is to work with them to help make sure they are thinking about those things. You know, have you thought about your where the sign will be and how you're going to do that. Because if you wait till the end and then it ends up that you can't do what you want to do. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, Alex is not, but a lot of people, it's, it's you know, their first opening of a business um, as far as, you know, Burger Mess has done it before. But, um, and so we're here to like ha- help them think about it, get them connected to the right resource in the community, um, you know, kind of temper maybe a little bit and say, well, our timelines for permits are this long, but being, you know, upfront, I think really helps businesses then better plan because it's yeah. the unknown that really is scary for businesses. So, yeah. So that's why I say, you know, earlier it's a marathon, not a sprint because yeah. um, in order to do it right, um, I mean, nobody would want to see Burger Master just go in there and be in the same, you know, same building with, um, you know, a fresh coat of paint. I mean, they want, they want it to make an amazing and a community asset and they want to be here a long time. So yeah, we want them to do that too. So. Yeah. yeah, it shows, yeah, that they're here for a long time. Um, yeah. So one thing that I did talk about with Alex that I don't think made our video that I just wanted to share, because I know it's important to a lot of our community members, yeah. is he's excited to also bring back the car shows. So yeah. I know that was a, a often a time place people come gather, just have fun. Um, so he's excited to rekindle that tradition. So that's also important right. to note. Yeah. yeah. I think they're doing some this year, right? They're hoping to. Yes. Yeah. And and so and then probably back to, you know, full throttle. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see, uh, you know, they're going to be, you know, kind of doing things in stages. Right. And yeah. so having the trailer open and then uh, yeah, seeing some activity around there. I think I mentioned um, when I went to visit on site, the um, there were people walking up to the, you know, thinking they could go get a burger master, like, you know, a couple days after they announced. So, so there's a lot of interest. Um, and once that trailer's there, then there'll be a reason to go. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, you know, I, I, I told Alex, we'll definitely keep in touch. We'll see how yes. the progress goes and we'll continue to cover it here on buzz. Um, yeah. so thank you everyone for joining us today. If you, um, have a question or a lead on some gossip or something we should track down, uh, send us an email at ed at Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.